<laughs> All right, we're going to talk about our featured storyteller, who uh, I've known who they are for a very long time, but they're just meeting me tonight for the first time, and um, it's kind of fun to meet that person that you never met before. <laughs> well, I've met you a hundred times, but you were way too memorable. Anyways, Utopia is a, a Vase Leon, also known as Mac Town Thotty, and the Ebony Ingenue, is a prominent figure in the middle Georgia drag scene. She's been performing for 13 years, with six of those years dedicated to drag, as one of the co-founders and show directors of the middle Georgia drag troupe, The Tribe. Woo! Utoya has significantly influenced the local drag community by, by providing a platform for upcoming for performers alongside her drag family. Utoya is, a, is renowned for her dynamic performances that blend comedy, live singing, and sometimes controversial original lyrics. She is known for her sensational singing, rapping, and dancing, making her a versatile and unforgettable entertainer. Her performances often include a variety of music genres from retro hits to contemporary top 40 tracks, ensuring an engaging experience for a, for a diverse audience. Before performing, before forming the, let me try again. I've only had the one beer. Before forming the tribe, Utoya performed with her sister Christina uh, as the Leon sisters, a duo that celebrated their family bond. Their mentor in the drag community was Tangerine Summers, a legendary local queen who helped pave the way for drag acceptance in Maple since the 1980s. And without further ado, please welcome to the stage, Utoya Leon. for having me, and thank you so much to Miss Julia for yes. recommending me. Um, I did not know what the theme was going to be, and then she told me it was hot and heavy, and I said, well, why do you want me for that, love? <laughs> <laughs> what you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to tell like, God's honest truth. When I found out it was hot and heavy, I was like, hmm, do I tell a sex story? Because, you know, I be having sex. <laughs> or do I tell this story that I completely forgot about? <laughs> but I'm gonna let the audience decide. You wanna hear one of numerous sex stories, because you know, <laughs> or hear about the water park. Water, water park. park. So I was having sex and <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the water park. I'm gonna take you back to 2010 on a hot July in Atlanta, Georgia. My sister and my mother and myself all decided to take a weekend trip and we stayed at a hotel, we went and got food, we spent the weekend going to uh, Six Flags and we also went to White Water. So Six Flags rained the entire, like, Aww. the entire time we were there. Everybody say, aww. 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 But luckily, the very next day, the skies were clear. It was a nice and hot day, and I need y'all to keep that in mind, because it gets hotter. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, we go to Whitewater, and we are having the best time. We are going on all the water slides. We're going to the wave pool. And for some strange reason, I don't know why, y'all been in a wave pool, right? Yeah. You know, the waves, yeah. You know, it goes on and goes off. Yeah. Some, some people, I guess, don't know how to swim. <laughs> and so they had to keep hitting the emergency button on the wave pool to stop the waves to go save people. Just ruining my whole experience. But regardless, we got on all the slides. We're having such a good time. Out of nowhere, they call to evacuate the water park. And I'm like, well, I mean, we just got off a slide. We're like, okay, we don't know why, but we start heading towards the direction of, there's this little bridge from the wave pool 
like that area to uh, that takes you down the little walkway where the front gate is. As we are walking past the wave pool, the control room, which is like a little, like almost like a cabana type thing, is smoking. Oh, it is smoking, and it eventually catches on fire. It was flaming. And look at me, I know flaming. <laughs> What's funny? Anyways, um, <laughs> no, this thing was on fire. Now, mind you, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell the truth. It, like I just said, it was like a little control room. It looked like a shed, basically. But apparently, that was enough. People are running out of the water. People are running. It turns into y'all seen Jurassic World, <laughs> when everyone's just losing their shit, just running everywhere. So me and my sis, me and my sister, and my mom, we're like, okay, well, we just gotta leave. So we just gotta go outside. They'll figure it out. We'll go outside. People are running. We get separated. It turns into one of those movie moments where they're like, they're by the gate, reaching for me. I'm in the back. But the point is, we make it outside, and guess where our locker was? That has all that has our our change of clothes, our keys, everything. Right next to that fucking flaming control room. They evacuated the water park and we had to sit outside in the sun for two hours. And in this two hours, my mother and my mother and my sister and I, we are all very unserious people. So we're just sitting here, just you know, laughing, sitting on the side of the car. We've been in chlorine and my mother's hair is starting to turn colors. <laughs> like that is how bad it was. So eventually we get an announcement that they're about to start letting people back in. So me and my sister go ahead and get in the line because you know, we're younger. And while we're in the line, we're by these little kids and they're just so, uh, I, I miss being a kid. They're so optimistic. Oh, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna go on this slide. I'm gonna go do this. We get in the line, and as we're getting closer and closer to the front entrance, my sister starts having signs of a heat stroke, and she passes out. And thank goodness the paramedics were like nearby. They get her on the stretcher. They start wheeling her away from the gate, and I'm getting so emotional because she has the wristband that's gonna get me in the locker. So I said, hey, can you cut that off of her real quick? She was gonna be fine. Anyways, I make it in and I, I'm sorry, I get emotional because I'm the one that saved our family essentially because I got inside and I got in the locker and got our stuff. But I want y'all to know the true hero of that day was uh, the Red Cross. They came and brought us waters and like crackers and stuff like that. It was really nice and I honestly, I just feel so crazy. I was fully gonna tell y'all a sex story and she invited me to Hot and Heavy and I almost didn't tell you about the time a fucking water park got caught on fire. Like, how, what the fuck does that happen? A water park caught on fire. I know, I don't know what y'all are expecting, but I'm just so thankful to have been here to tell y'all that story. If you, um, and if any of you actually follow me, I can share you, you the news article, because this really happened. This is not a made up thing. In July of 2010, a fucking water park caught on fire. 